different of which number one most requested piece of content that people contact me about is HDC or hyperdimensional computing. Uh, so with that being said, I do have one video on HDC, kind of an intro video. With this video, I'll make it more uh, in-depth, give you kind of everything that I know with regards towards HDC overall, what I've uncovered with it all with my research. Uh, and answer the final question for you at the end, which is, do I think that HDC is a transformer killer? And I have a very specific and clear answer uh, all, one way or another with regards towards that question. So with that said, let's dive into, first of all, defining what exactly HDC is. HDC is very different than a neural network um, or transformers or anything else. Uh, first of all, you're not pre-training any sort of data, right? So you don't uh, feed the data, you're not uh, taking in the data set and, and, and training the model specifically on the data set. Um, what happens is, is that you take your data and the model, you vectorize it essentially, or you turn it into two vectors, um, and then you s assign a certain dimension or number of vectors, um, like 100, 1,000, 500, et cetera. And then you assign th these dimensions or vectors, hypervectors represent features uh, or representations in the data. And then within that, um, each you take your full data set and then you create individual individualized vectors based off of the data set. And then those individualized vectors get bundled and then uh, that bundling process creates a uh, final shape, essentially, of your data set. And then that final shape is what the model is uh, looking off of and working off of. So it's based off of geometry, right? And then the good thing, there's uh, why utilize this method? First of all, it's very robust, right? It's robust to noise. And it's robust to modality, which is uh, very important and very unique when it comes to these algorithms. Uh, for this particular algorithm, it doesn't necessarily matter whether or not it's uh, image, text, audio, uh, etc. It's all the same. <laughs> and it's all essentially the same process. You just convert it into hypervectors. Uh, it's also very fast. Again, you're not uh, training uh, on, on the data set, so you can just do this um, and, and have it operate very quickly. Um, what are the downsides? Downsides are um, that it's not as uh, robust overall as a scalable uh, because you every single time that you're adding a new piece of data, you're changing the shape overall within this and a new piece of data being any, whatever piece of your data you're operating within, right? So adding a new image, adding a new sentence, <laughs> adding anything that is new data is going to change the shape of the the overall um, shape that it's monitoring and, and um, essentially utilizing for its um, representations. Uh, and then by changing the overall shape, that changes everything about it. And then so the model has to go through that process again. Uh, and then the big caveat within this is, is that it's very hard to get um, higher than 90% accuracy. Although what I'll show you within this is that your baseline accuracies are going to be between like, let's say between 72 and 88% um, is the benefit of, of this, right? So as opposed to a typical like neural network, if you took a neural network and you just take it and it's never seen a data set before, it's oftentimes going to score like, you know, eight, 9% single digit accuracy, like well below even 50% coin flip accuracy. Whereas with this algorithm, just off of the bat, you're going to get like 88% accuracy, which is pretty good, right? <laughs> and then so uh, that's the big thing to keep in mind with HDC models as we move in. But so diving, let's move on from that and let me show you kind of some examples of uh, what HDC models look like within this, right? And then so uh, within this, this is essentially uh, the first one instance that we're looking at is a uh, an example of an HTC model where I add one bell and whistle to it, but we can go through this. So the very first thing that I do is I create the generic uh, data set, um, a synthetic data set that I create. 
Uh, and then I'm creating it and uh, dividing it into hyperdimensional features, right? So in this instance, I'm creating it and I'm dividing it into 1,000 dimensions. I should highlight here, one of the big things that I have uh, noticed within my research within this is, and <laughs> if you don't know, so uh, within uh, HDC, so the big difference is, is between like HDC um, encoding and your typical transformer is, is that there's no weights here, right? There's no weights and there's no parameters <laughs> within any of this code, right? This, this uh, full code is the HDC model. Uh, and then it's only an encoder, right? So there's no encoder, there's no decoder, there's no forward pass, there's no backward pass. Uh, it's not a neural network. It's an algorithm, right? Um, and then the algorithm um, just runs. It, it, you're encoding the uh, uh, hypervectors. So like you have an encoding process, which is similar to what you would do um, within a, a neural network model, but that's the only similarity, right? And then uh, outside of that, like this isn't, it's a, it's a classifier and it's a machine learning algorithm, but it's not a neural network. And then, so it's important to, to make that separation there within this as to what is uh, going on within that, right? I think it's important to understand that within your mind. Um, and then, so all that is happening is, is that you're encoding these vectors and then you're training the model to uh, classify the vectors, right? Um, and then to classify the features and to classify the shape. Um, and then within this, within our synthetic data set, by doing this, the model just scores right off the bat 72% accuracy. So again, it's gonna be generally between like 72 and 88%. Um, and then this is kind of just the shape that it creates off of the data, right? So very straightforward as to what it's doing. Um, and then so next test would be to give it like an actual real data set, right? Um, and then so uh, within this, I am utilizing the uh, MNIST data set um, and then just testing the uh, accuracy of it within this and then trying to uh, improve the accuracy, the general accuracy of the model. So our first test was 72% accuracy. Can I do better? Uh, and I get 88% accuracy just by tweaking and, and making a few tweaks within this model, right? So uh, this is uh, like, I'm highlighting this to show you that this is really what I've found through my testing to like uh, numerous tests to be uh, your baselines that you're gonna be operating within. 72% accuracy to 88. It's hard to get below that and it's hard to get above that. If you're getting like way below, like sometimes you'll get like, um, in the teens, you're doing something wrong <laughs> with your setup. Uh, you should expect between 72 and 88%. So moving on from there, um, the next test, as I mentioned, is to, to utilize an, it on a actual real data set, right? So in this instance, I utilize the Fashion MNIST data set. Um, and then just for, honestly, for computational purposes, I use uh, 500 dimensions instead of 1,000. Uh, and I use 10% of the data set, and then I'm just sampling from a, a random 10% of the data set. Um, and this is all just for, for compute purposes is really um, what I put that in there for. Um, and then I just have the same thing. It's again, it's, it's what we're doing is we're training a classifier, right? And then so uh, we encode the data into our data set and then boom, 83% accuracy. <laughs> and then so uh, off of a real world data set, here it is. And then uh, the next test I wanted to do, so as I mentioned, this is like some additional bells and whistles on top of a standard HDC model. This is um, your pure HDC model right here, right? And as you can see, it's not a lot of code for a pure HDC model. Um, up to here is all like just uh, uh, libraries and your data set. And then uh, here is the training mechanism here. Uh, and then so our model is this, like little, I mean, that's our model. Uh, and then like that's uh, the HDC model. Uh, the, and, and, and that's really it, right? <laughs> and um, that's all that you're doing within this. And then that algorithm, or more of an algorithm than a model, uh, essentially comes out. And then we, again, we're getting 83% accuracy on a real world data set. Uh, and then, so the next example to show you is how exactly does this look like? Um, within these dimensions, right? And then can you add a, like framework and, and do different things to these dimensions? And then so within the dimensions, you can add a framework to the dimensions and, and you can add framework and dimensionality in that way. But when it comes to combining different elements um, with HDC, I'll tell you upfront and within my experimentation, I found that like, 
Um, HTC, this algorithm, it it's amazing <laughs> to what it does, right? Because it's very fast. So again, the benefit of all of this is that we're not training the model on these things, right? I'm taking this Fashion MNIST data set in this instance, which is a real data set, and then in 27 seconds or 36 seconds, et cetera, it's, it's running and then getting uh, 80 plus percent accuracy on this data set. In order for me to replicate that within a neural network, I'd be utilizing a large neural network and training it for several epochs, right? So uh, this is using a fraction of the compute and a fraction of the time um, and getting essentially the same result. What I can't replicate is, is that the neural network will, after fine tuning, and if the neural network is large enough, it will outperform this, right? It'll outperform that 88%. It'll get up to like 98% um, or better uh, on that particular data set, right? And then it'll, it'll outperform there. So it's more uh, specialized as opposed to generalized <laughs> is, is the way to, to put that out. But so breaking that into real world terms and, and can you combine this with like, can you combine HDC with a neural network or with what we were looking at there at the top, it was uh, combining it with LCM architectures. And what I found the, the pure and simple answer to that question is, is that it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't do anything. You, it's, it adds complexity to the model. Uh, and then that added complexity that doesn't add anything. It, it, you'll either get your same accuracy or less. I haven't performed a test where uh, I've combined it with uh, another element and it's increased the accuracy of the model. That's just through my testing of uh, HCC uh, and how it works. Um, within that though, and, and I will say that you can train um, on models on on hyper vectors themselves right like on the hyper vector data um and i'll leave that there um and and don't i won't go further into the, that than that but i will mention that but so diving uh more specifically into um what you can do within the individualized uh framework of like a uh, hdc overall and then so um let's say you you have like an up to a thousand dimensions or up to 10,000 dimensions. And then so that's probably number one to uh, highlight and uh, talk about within this is uh, like, why not go to a hundred thousand or a million dimensions? Uh, and then so you can like, but so if you go above a thousand dimensions, you get a diminishing returns and then oftentimes worse results, right? So uh, you can, it's not like, a, like you can't look at this as a neural network. So uh, if you go from a thousand dimensions to a million dimensions, it's not necessarily better. It's necessarily worse because you're in increase in the compute, you're going to have a bunch of zeros, like you're not going to have a million dimensions worth of data to fill out. Um, and it's to be computationally expensive, right? Like it's, um, your computer just won't be able to handle that that much. It's it's uh, the math scales with the amount of dimensions. Um, and then so going from at that, like, uh, going like no computer would be able to handle more than like 10,000 dimensions is kind of just the best way to put it like like like, like uh, anything beyond that is just theoretical just because of pure compute so uh, diving into what we're looking at here and then breaking this down if you want to apply a specific framework to the dimensions right so how this works overall is let's say that you have um, a thousand dimensions uh, 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 representing data. And then a dimension is a representation of, of data, so of a word or a concept, right? Let's say, for example, I have the word and the concept of cat. If I have a thousand dimensions, then one dimension would be um, that a cat is furry. Another dimension would be that a cat is playful. Another dimension would be that it hunts mice, that it's nocturnal, uh, et cetera, right? And then so all of these are just stacking up and then giving me attributes, actions, context, relationships, entity types, uh, and uh, et cetera, right, about uh, what we're looking at within the entity. So if I want to actually make a framework out of that, I can. And that's what we're looking at here, right? So uh, if I want to say, for example, assign dimensions zero through nine to the attributes, and then 10 through 19 to the actions, 20 to 29 to the context, 30 to 39 to the relationships, etc. I can do that. I just need to define the schema and then make sure that the model understands and knows the schema and make sure that it's a repeatable um, and actually 
mathematically equivalent schema, and that's really it, right? And then so you do that, and then here, here it is. Right? You'll get um, a representation, and, and and the model will make hypervectors based off of your schema. And then so this is a hundred dimensions per uh, attribute in this instance. So it's gonna be a lot of just a lot of zeros, really. Um, and then there's your end result. And then uh, last thing that I wanted to do uh, within this is so again like a. Uh, HTC is not neural networks, right? And then that's the best thing to and best way to do that. So what happens if you combine HTC with neural networks? Because you can do it, right? There's nothing that stops you. Uh, you're just your accuracy goes down to like nine percent. Uh, I, like on, and this is the same data sets, right? This fashion MNIST data set. Uh, and I don't, I didn't want to game this. I, I like, I tried to uh, do this, like. Uh, and and like improve this and do anything that I could and I couldn't get this model to perform better than nine percent accuracy when combining it with a neural network. Um, and then so just showcasing it right to like like it's not like um, it's not an improvement all the time to to make this um, to, uh, more complex. It's gonna like. It, Look at this nine percent accuracy, right? And I, I, I don't know how to improve that. Uh, and then, so the last thing, uh, second to last thing to talk about here uh, within that is, so we were like the fashion MNIST data set is with regards towards images. And then I mentioned that this uh, particular algorithm, one of the best things about it is that it's robust across modalities, which is very unique for this type of algorithm, right? So images, text, audio, etc. It doesn't matter. And then so. But again, it's not going to be 100% accurate uh, within that, but it's going to get you um, what you like a, a really quick representation, right? Like this last one runs in literally zero seconds. Uh, and then I'm just encoding this sentence. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. But to me, this is perfect, right? Because this gives you a representation of exactly like how it's encoding, right? So you can see what this loss actually looks like. So the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. What gets encoded is the brown dog lazy over. So like, uh, it's not a hundred percent like translation. Right? Like there's a there's a mistranslation within that. It's it's eighty percent accurate, uh, and then that's what you're going to get overall within this. And then so. Uh, going back up to the top, is this a transformer killer? No, it's not a transformer killer. Really because of that, right? Because you can't ever fine tune it to get that accuracy. And then when you do try to fine tune it, for whatever reason, your accuracy just plummets to 9% accuracy. And that's what it is, right? Um, and then so uh, it's hard to um, make it something that it's not, right? Like, uh, And that's how I, I look at all of these things overall. Like, I don't think that there's a silver bullet to these problems. Like, um, HDC, this is amazing for situations where you're okay when, if you're okay with 72% to 88% accuracy, like if you want an initial assumption on an initial basis, you have no idea what where to start with whatsoever, run it through an HDC model and you're going to get somewhere to start, right? And then so um, there's benefit there. Like this could save you huge amounts of compute if done properly, but you're not ever going to make this into a neural network. You can combine it and then put this output and give the output to a neural network. Uh, and then that's a different process, right? And that's creating agents and, and, and chains of, of agents, uh, which is the next step from there. But so overall highlighting, um, this is uh, HDC as a process. It's really cool, really easy to implement, really easy to understand. It's just binding and bundling, right? So it's taking your concept, creating it into vectors, combining and then into hyper vectors, and then combining those hyper vectors into a shape, into an imaginary shape. This is all an imaginary process, right? Um, into an imaginary shape overall that the model then dissects, and it's the shape that matters to the model overall. <laughs> it's like, so the model turns the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog into a shape, right? This is the shape. And then this is essentially, it's encoding this and embedding this in hyperdimensional space. Uh, and then this is the encoding and the dimensions of the shape overall. Um, and that's essentially what the model is doing. Um, and then so if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.